everyone, welcome back. I am very sorry. I am aware that this is an extremely dark topic. However, there have been a couple stories in the news lately that have reaffirmed just how big of a problem child exploitation is in our culture. And I think it's therefore very important to once again spotlight this awful issue. The first of the news stories is one that many of you are likely familiar with by now, and it's come to be known as Balenciaga Gate. However, for the few of you who are unaware, in mid-November, the luxury fashion brand and Balenciaga unveiled its holiday ad campaign, which in one photo included young children holding teddy bears in bondage harnesses surrounded by wine glasses. And in another photo showcasing a handbag, internet users discovered that underneath the handbag were copies of documents from the 2008 Supreme Court case, the United States versus Williams, wherein the court had been tasked with deciding whether laws banning the pandering promoting of child pornography violated the First Amendment right to free freedom of speech and expression. The Supreme Court upheld the 2003 laws to continue to outlaw the advertising, promoting, presenting, or distributing child pornography. Obviously, many people were rightly furious about the ad campaign. Thousands of concerned people made videos on TikTok, Instagram, YouTube, denouncing the brand and saying that they were going to boycott it in the future, with some people even burning or throwing out their Balenciaga merchandise. Balenciaga quickly deleted all of their posts on their official Instagram page, which begs the question, did they delete the photos to deter angry commenters or because they were worried about or possibly aware of other inappropriate things in their past campaigns that would surely be found given the internet's sudden focus on them. Balenciaga also issued a statement admitting that the bondage teddy bears were inappropriate and they also denied knowledge of the court documents in the photo. Regardless, at least one or more people were responsible for designing the completely inappropriate aspects of the ad campaign. Not to mention, how the heck did this ad campaign get approved in the first place given that the approval process is extremely rigorous with so many people involved? Overall, I think it's safe to say that the Balenciaga brand has been heavily damaged, and rightly so. However, what I also find particularly disturbing is the poor excuse for a backlash from people in the fashion industry as well as celebrities who are associated with Balenciaga. One celebrity, Julia Fox, who has not worked with Balenciaga, only worn their clothes, said that she thought it was horrific and that when she was reading and watching all of the videos, she literally felt sick to her stomach. She went on to say that this was not a problem of Hollywood or the fashion industry, but an issue with men. Good for Julia Fox on being one of the few people who called out Balenciaga, however, blaming this disgusting ad campaign on all men is disgusting in itself. This is a child exploitation problem, not a man problem. Sure, many child predators are in fact male, but this is not a problem that extends to all men in general. Kim Kardashian, meanwhile, who has worked with Balenciaga, released a statement a full three days after the controversy began, in which she lukewarmly stated that she is, quote, reevaluating her future relationship with the brand, end quote, as opposed to cutting ties with them, which she was heavily criticized for. Aside from a few others in the fashion industry who, to their credit, did call out Balenciaga, there was very little criticism to be heard from mainstream media journalists, many of which labeled the controversy a conspiracy theory, which adds yet another dent in their credibility. And there was also little criticism to be heard from other influential public figures, specifically those who have worked with Balenciaga in the past. Aside from Kim Kardashian, you have celebrities like Bella Hadid, Naomi Campbell, and Nicole Kidman, who have worked with the brand, none of which who have vocally condemned the ad campaign thus far, despite many calling for them to do so. This honestly says a lot about where the priorities of the mainstream media, the fashion industry, and Hollywood are. Many of them, they only bother engaging in selective, mainstream-approved activism. For example, they will howl and screech all day long about how terrible people like Donald Trump or Elon Musk are, but when it comes to protecting the most innocent and the most vulnerable children, many of them react very lukewarmly or they don't have a word in defense to say at all. A popular leftist YouTuber who calls herself Shoe on Head was one of the first people to raise the alarm about the Balenciaga ad campaign, and her tweet ended up going viral. What I find mind-bogglingly insane, and also a bit suspicious about this, is that 
a lot of leftists actually got angry at her for this tweet, saying things like, can we stop pretending that Xu is an ally yet? Xu on head on her way to once again use her massive platform to provide the neo-Nazis in her audience with fodder they can use to justify the murder of gay people, but this time the day after another anti-gay terror attack. Xu herself is basically a terrorist enabler at this point. Xu on head throwing queers under the bus right after a mass shooting to cater to her homophobic audience. It got so bad that Xu ended up having to make a response video defending herself. Xu needs to stop with the conspiracy posting. Ah yes, the conspiracy. The conspiracy that the fashion industry is f***ed up and weird. The conspiracy that the powerful elites are abusing children that conspiracy. The second news story concerns Twitter and the fact that for years there was allegedly a massive amount of child exploitation on the popular social media site that essentially went unchecked. It's recently been reported that before Elon Musk purchased Twitter, there were allegedly 10 million views of child sexual exploitation material watched on Twitter. In fact, Twitter was sued over this, with the lawsuit alleging that Twitter refused to take down widely shared pornographic images and videos of a teenage sex trafficking victim because an investigation, quote, didn't find a violation of the company's policies. Twitter's failure to combat child exploitation material on their site really isn't anything new. Back in 2016 and 2017, I was one of many, many people who tried raising the alarm about the massive amount of child exploitation material on Twitter, but to no avail. Twitter seemingly didn't care. Their focus seemed much more geared towards banning political dissidents and censoring hate speech. Enter Elon Musk in 2022. Almost immediately upon purchasing Twitter, Elon made it a top priority to remove the child sexual exploitation material. Much of the Twitter child exploitation awareness that was raised is thanks to a woman called Eliza Blue who is a human trafficking survivor and who has made it her mission to get child exploitation material removed from Twitter. Eliza finally saw victory in her quest via Elon Musk. I mean, thank God he takes the issue so seriously. Perhaps it's because he has so many children himself. I believe he has 10 of them. Ultimately, the real question at the end of the day is, why was child exploitation material allowed to fester on Twitter for so long? Perhaps it has something to do with the people who worked at old Twitter. And when I say old Twitter, I mean Twitter before Elon Musk purchased it. For example, Twitter's former head of trust and safety, a man called Yoel Roth, was recently exposed as being quite the creep via his old tweets. Internet users dug up old tweets of his, such as necrophilia, isn't even a crime in some states, with the hashtag conversations not to have in Starbucks, or that awkward moment when you can't tell whether your neighbor has a really loud infant or is just watching really loud porn. And there are a lot of other sketchy tweets as well. Furthermore, Revolver News picked apart Roth's 300-page Grinder dissertation in which he suggests that the Gay Grinder app should expand its services to give underage users greater access to it. This is not to say that I am accusing Yoel Roth of being a predator. That is, of course, a massive accusation, and it's not one to be thrown around lightly. But he definitely is a creep, one who should be deeply ashamed that neither he nor his Twitter associates seem to make the matter of child exploitation on Twitter a top priority. Elon Musk himself stated that it is a crime that they refuse to take action on child exploitation for years. To which Jack Dorsey, Twitter's former CEO, replied, this is false. To which Elon replied, no, it is not. When Ella Irwin, who now runs Twitter's trust and safety, joined Twitter earlier this year, almost no one was working on child safety. She raised this with Ned and Parag, but they rejected her staffing request. I made it a top priority immediately. It's no secret that our society has a lot of ideological differences at the moment. However, I think that no matter where you fall on the political spectrum, it should be pretty easy to agree that we need to protect children. We should all be able to unify, at least on this one very important point, right? Wrong. We are currently in the midst of a massive fight to protect children from being exposed to sexual material at a very young age, introducing them to the notion of drag queens at Drag Queen Story Hour, for example, taking them along to blatantly sexual pride parades, exposing them to pornographic literature in school, and so on. Many leftists, 
definitely not all, but many leftists, insist that it is perfectly okay to introduce sexual material to children at a very young age, including the LGBTQ community, and if you happen to disagree with them on this point, then you are a bigot. And scarily enough, the left is slowly succeeding in shifting the Overton window, making massive advancements on this front. This is certainly not to say that the situation is hopeless. Elon combating child sexual exploitation material on Twitter, for example, is a huge victory. It's something we can all be happy about. But the problem, unfortunately, persists in many other areas. As I already mentioned, the left is downplaying the harmful effects of introducing children to sexual material at a very young age, warding off criticism of their agenda by insulting people with things such as bigot and fascist. We cannot allow them a victory in this area, because it is not harmless. The youth deserve an innocent childhood, and it is our job to ensure this. This right here is the red line. If the left is allowed to cross it, then we have in fact officially lost. Thank you so much for watching, everyone. Before I go, I just want to quickly mention that if you would like to support me, you can best do so on Subscribestar, where I have a private Telegram chat group and private group Discord calls with supporters. I also have an Amazon wish list linked in either the top pinned comment or the video description, or you can pick up a copy of my newest book, Patriots Not Welcome, which is available both in English and in German. Thank you so much again for watching, and I will see you all soon.